together. God has made us free. He's delivered his people. And now he has a word for us. Now the Lord has a word for us through our pastor on our Pastor Appreciation Month. Come on, let's praise the Lord for the word. And let's give God a praise for our pastor, Pastor Ian Edwards, in the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet and give God some praise. I didn't say stand on your feet and praise me. I said stand on your feet and give God some praise. Come on, give him your best praise. Come on, give him your best praise. I'm not going to fool with you too long. Give him your best praise. I know you're a cool cat and I know you're a cool young lady, but y'all can give God your best. I can take this off. I, I don't need to look this good to praise the Lord. I can take all of this off. So I know you're cute. I know you're handsome. But we ought to give God our best praise. Hold on a second. Come on now. Let me Come say something. Come on. This week, yes. this week was a week of sudden deaths. Come on. It was a week of sudden deaths. Not only in friends of mine. I just got another phone call from somebody else, somebody that suddenly died. It was a week of sudden deaths. I was seeing it all on Facebook, random people. And here you are in the house of the Lord. We made it. We made it. And you don't have something to praise God for. You can still kiss your children. You can still kiss your husband and your wife. You're putting on your clothes. You're not decrepit. And you don't have a reason to give God some praise. You don't have one reason to give God some praise. You are still in the land of the living. So one more time for the Holy Ghost, I want y'all to give God some praise. Come on, come on. Come on, I want y'all to lay into it. One of them Pentecostal praises. I got holiness church in here? What about Methodists? All right, all right. All right. He was even praising him on the guitar. Did y'all see him? His mouth was open and everything. Go ahead, praise him, little man. If you ain't praising him for nothing else, you are praising him for life. And I'm not just talking about life as in breathing, but if you're a believer, I'm talking about newness of life. I'm talking about everlasting life, which means if something were to happen to you today, you would go home and be with the Lord. Ain't nothing stopping you. You have life, and you have it more abundantly. And that's a reason that we ought to give God some praise. Amen, 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 amen. I don't like to be the pumper-upper, if you will, but I, I just think there's just so much that we need to praise God for. Anybody here having hard times? Yeah, you can still praise the Lord, though. I will bless the Lord at all times. Good times, bad times, hard times, times where I can't see my way through. I will still bless the Lord. Oh, y'all, mm. it's not the sermon. I'm just trying to encourage you. Everybody in here is having at least one bad time, one bad situation. But I believe that we can still bless the Lord. I didn't read about any of y'all in the newspaper this week. <laughs> That's a reason. Just to give God a little bit, a little bit. Of praise. Now, I know how some of y'all act with your favorite teams and stuff. That's why I'm mad at what I don't see in here today. Mm -hmm. When you watch your little kid, little Johnny, little Susie do something, you just scream and screaming. And I'm talking about the Lord. Don't you know this? If something were to happen to little Johnny and little Susie, the Lord would still be worthy to be praised. If your team never won another game, God is still worthy to be praised. So how much more, I'm just trying to help you out, how much more should the God of your salvation and my salvation get the praises that are due his name? He never loses. He never loses.
Even when you feel defeated, God is still winning. <laughs> Even when you are defeated, God is still winning. And I believe that in your defeated moment, if you just pump him up just a little bit, that's enough for him to raise up off his throne and reach his hand down into your bad place and deliver you. I believe that. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe a thing I'm saying. But I'm giving you what I've witnessed in my life. Amen? Hold hands with somebody beside you. Let's get cozy in the room. You can go all across the aisle and everything. Let's get cozy. We're family. We're family. Everybody holding somebody. You can go across the aisles. It's all good. Hold somebody's hand. Get a look. She just broke it. Amen. Connection. Connection. Amen. Anybody excited about eating? You don't have to act shy. Give God a praise for the food. Okay, yeah, don't act shy. I'm excited about eating. Amen, 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 amen. Father, we just love you. God, we appreciate you. We appreciate you because of your faithfulness, because of your goodness, because of your compassions, because of your love, your mercy, your grace, how you strengthened us. God, we appreciate you. You're the greatest servant. You're the greatest steward to ever live, who was before and who is to come. God, we thank you that even when we miss the mark, even when we do wrong, you're still right there. Your arms are still open. You still have a smile on your face. Your words are still, come to me. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you because we're here. We're living, God. We have breath in our body. We're healthy. Yeah, we may have different degrees of health, God, but we're healthy. And we're here in your presence. God, we've come to this place to honor you. I know what they've declared today, but we've come to honor you. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. And we've come to rejoice, and we are so glad in it. God, I lift up my neighbor right now. God, you know my neighbor better than me. You know the person whose hand I'm holding better than me. You know the challenges that they face, the trials that they have, the heartaches that they have, the wonders, the questions, God. But I pray for them right now. I take on the burden even right now, God. And use me, Father, as a conduit to infuse your power, to infuse your love, to infuse more grace, to infuse more anointing, to infuse more peace, to infuse more joy. God, I just want to be used by you. God, we thank you for the connection that we have in you and how it translates into our connection with one another. How we carry the burdens of one another, how we love on one another. How we speak to one another and treat one another, God. And I just thank you for this family of believers. And God, we ask on this day, Father, that you open up our hearts and our minds to what you want to say. To what we're going to talk about today. What's going to be presented on today. Not a message or a sermon, but something to be presented to the people of God. Something practical that we can walk in. And now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, he is my strength, and I know him to be your strength. He is my redeemer, and I know that he's your redeemer. Let the people of God say amen. amen. And one more time, give God the best praise that you can give him. Amen. You can take your seats. You can take your seat. I appreciate you all. We've, uh, you all know there's no pastor's appreciation if you all don't allow me to be your pastor. You can't pastor a church where people don't want you to pastor them. So as you all say that you appreciate me, you got to know that I appreciate you too. And it doesn't matter if you've been here all four years or four months or just today. I still appreciate you. Amen? Amen. This morning for a few mo moments, I want to do something different. And I might even do this uh, once a year. Um, but as we finish up this stewardship lesson on today, um, I'm going to speak to you very
practically, and I'm actually just going to give you some information, if you will. So this isn't what I would call a message or a sermon, but um, it's just going to be some information for us to, for us as a church to be able to go forward and do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. It's all right to just get some information sometimes. Amen? Amen. And next week is Communion Sunday, so I bring the house down then. Amen? Yeah, I preach then. I preach and do some online. I do all of that. But we want to do something. Uh, I did that for TK because she was praying that I would do it. Amen. But this morning, I want to speak from the title, this is the last part, uh, Stewardship with a Purpose. And the subtitle is Provision for the Vision. We've been talking about stewardship all month. Stewardship with a Purpose. Provision for the Vision. When we consider scripture in both the Old and the New Testament, there are many stories and situations that speak to the fact that Anything that God impressed on the heart of man to do or to build for the kingdom always had the resources available, always had the resources available for it because the resources were here before God put man here and the resources didn't belong to man, but they always belong to God. So just like anything, God has given us spiritual gifts, he's given us talents, he's given us money. There is an intended purpose already established by God. And it is the responsibility of us as servants and stewards to ensure that these purposes are fulfilled. God doesn't want to hear how fearful you've been. He doesn't want to hear how forgetful we can be or the story that we're just too faulty to be used by God. He doesn't want to hear all that. He only expects us to be faithful. And then when he returns, that's what he's going to be looking for. So as the people of God, we must understand that the provider has given us provision for the purposes that God has mandated for this ministry. Somebody say this ministry. And the provision is not going to fall from heaven. I, I hate to disappoint you. It's just not, it just doesn't work like that. It's just not going to appear. It's just not going to fall from heaven. But when we make a kingdom transaction, that's your word, Larry, by investing in the vision, God opens up heaven to make sure that we have the blessings we need to fund the vision. Y'all with me? In other words, every time we make a decision to remain committed and consistent in investing our tithes, which is 10% of our income, and offerings in amounts separate and beyond your tithe into the vision of Wissick, then God makes a decision to make heaven an unlimited source of blessings in your life. That should have just made you shout on the inside a little bit, but you, you, you'll get it when you start doing it. You'll, you'll get it when you start doing it. This means that every time you give, you have more even when you don't see more left. You're always full even when it looks low. You know why? Because the master is unlimited in what he has and makes sure that out of his abundance that you and I always have. And he does this by giving increase to those stewards that he finds faithful. You got to go back and get the CDs of the other messages. Those are the ones that he not only releases more to give better. This was your, your last crazy point. But he blesses you so that you can live better. Y'all remember that? He doesn't release it so that you can just give better. But I believe that God wants us to live better. Because when you put God first in your giving, he wants you to enter into his joy. That was in that parable. He wants you to enter into his happiness. And one of the best ways that he can do that tangibly is to ensure you enjoy the blessings that come from dedicating your life to being a kingdom blesser. And God is so big and God is so rich in what he has. You don't have enough room to receive all that God wants to give to you. You don't have enough room to receive all that God wants to give to you. So he does it in stages and he does it in seasons as he sits back and takes note of how you've managed his affairs and then rewards you by increasing you and in the responsibility that comes with the increase. 
Notice how when you've been faithful in using, the key word is using, in using or sowing or investing or in releasing your gift, that the grace to use it increases over time. You notice that? You, you don't get grace when you just sit here in the seat, but notice how every time you decide to use what God has given you, you get a little better in it. You get stronger in it. People are looking at you say, look at what God is doing. He's only doing it because I'm doing something. Notice how it increases over time. Notice how your anointing increases over time. The more you seek God, your knowledge of God and the revelation of who he is increases over time. Why? Because you're using your gifts, and your abilities. And because God is a never-ending flow of grace, he's a never-ending flow of anointing, of knowledge and revelation, the only thing stopping God from getting more to you is you. Y'all need to hold on to that. The only thing from stopping God from getting more to you is you. So in financial stewardship, your investment is like the valve that shuts what God is blessing you with on and off. Pay attention here. Your investment is like a valve that either keeps it on or it shuts it off. So you want to keep your hand open to give because God is also trying to give it back to you in that same open hand. He is. While every time you keep your hand closed, have little faith. Or just say, I just want to do whatever I want to do with my money. Then nothing is coming out and God can't send anything to you. I'm telling you what I know. And, and it's not just about God getting something to you for you. But he wants to use you to invest in his kingdom purposes so that he can get a harvest returned unto himself. So know that God has a plan and a purpose for this church. And every member that's a part of this church is with us because you are saying that you are part of the plan and purposes that God wants to fulfill in this church. And if that's you, you must make a full investment. Did I say partial? Did I say half? Did I say a quarter, three quarters? Did I say just whenever you feel like it? You are part of this church, the plans and the purposes of this church. And if you are, then you must make a full investment. Somebody say, I'm all in. Say it again. I'm all in. Make a full investment in the kingdom. And that means your time, your talents, and your treasure. Any company you see built, any building you see go up, anything that you can think of that's successful and you've had the pleasure of enjoying and being blessed by, it took someone's time, talent, and treasure. That's just real. Y'all love them all, don't you? It took someone's time, talent, and treasure. If you got on something you really like, whatever the brand is, it took someone's time, talent, and treasure. And what we seek to do at WISIC is to advance the kingdom in such a way that people from all walks of life, every social class, every race, and even religious influence will have the pleasure of enjoying God's favor and love in a very tangible and real way. They will see the gospel when we give them grocery bags. They'll see the gospel when we give them free haircuts. They'll see the gospel when we're touching them and we're listening to them. And they'll have a place where the hurting can be healed, where the dying can be delivered and the run down can be restored. That's what happens when we're all in on the purposes and the plans of God for this church. Because that's the demonstration of the gospel that turns hearts to God and creates an opportunity for souls to be saved. Is the church winning souls evangelistic church? Mm -hmm. In case y'all didn't know it, part of our evangelism isn't just how we share the gospel from the Bible, but it's also how we share the gospel from our hand. How we listen and talk to and commune with one another. When we bless one another, that's the gospel right there. Because it makes it a lot easier to hear the gospel that way before you try to shove a Bible down somebody's throat. I'm just preaching what I know. Because people will be blessed by our sacrifice. Because through our efforts, they will experience a social and practical showing of Christ's sacrifice for the world. 
Did, you, did y'all know that even though we speak about Jesus Christ dying on the cross, a lot of people can't fathom that and understand it? We don't expect them to fathom it or understand it because to them it's the foolishness of preaching. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't understand it. But people always seem to understand something very social and something very practical. And let me just say this. You don't have to have money to show somebody who Jesus is. Notice I said it takes your time, your talents, and your treasure. Whoever you are, whatever you have, if you're willing to give it freely for somebody else, you can bring a harvest back to God. I don't want you all to think that this is just about money, but it takes money to do ministry. It takes money to do ministry. So we understand the perspective of our assignment, and it's that it's never about us, but it's about kingdom business and kingdom impact, and we have been given corporate responsibility, not a few of us responsibility. We've been given corporate responsibility to handle the business of God. That means it won't just take a few of us. But we need everyone living for God, we need everyone serving God, and we need everyone giving unto God. Because this is the reason why we're here. To live for God, to serve God, and to give unto God. And I always say this to new members, if you live for God, your service and your giving will be impacted. If you make a decision to live for God, and I'm not talking about, well, I am saved, Pastor. You can be saved and live like hell. I said, if you make a decision to live for God, sacrifice with your own life, give all that you have unto the Lord, you will serve harder and you will give better. So as we close out this stewardship lesson, but not our stewardship lifestyle, I want us to consider three things that are specific and contextual for this ministry to influence us to greater faithfulness in our stewardship. And it'll just take me a few minutes. I just want to give you some information. This this morning, I just want to give you information and speak on the vision, the value, and the victory. The vision, the value, and the victory. I like Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3, which says, Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now let me just say this, no organization will ever succeed without a vision. And what I find happens a lot in churches that Some people know the vision and some people don't. Sometimes the people that know the vision are those that are closest to the pastor and then they think that other people just somehow knew the vision but it wasn't placed out there. And this is why I might even do this once a year. We have some stewardship brochures that have been going around, get one, and you're gonna start seeing something in your bulletin every time you get one because we as a people need to know what the vision of this house is. The visitors that come in need to know what the vision of this house is. When people look us up online, they need to know what the vision of this house is because it's stewardship for a purpose. What's the vision of this house? To evangelize Pasadena through social, educational, financial, and spiritual empowerment. That's the vision. We won't just help them, but we're going to teach them how to help themselves. I like that part even better. It's all right to give somebody something and and bless somebody with something, but the church has to take on a responsibility where we show them how to be a blessing to themselves, for themselves, and get them in a position where they can bless other people. You can clap. That's a vision of this church. Notice I said through social, educational, financial, and spiritual empowerment. We'll partner with other agencies to get this type of stuff done. I'm just talking to you this morning. Something else that we'll do, we're going to purchase a facility or God's going to allow someone to give us a facility already purchased and furnished with everything. Y'all can clap through this whole message. This is your vision. You say God told you to be a part of this, right? It's your vision. You can clap about it. That allows WISIC to offer employment. Amen free services, and a community center for the community. 
complete with a library, computer lab, gymnasium, soup kitchen, food pantry, homeless accommodations, and a large sanctuary. Because we need, we gonna need to pack about five thousand in in one setting. Uh, y'all don't, y'all, okay. Y'all, y'all don't see what I see. A, a large enough sanctuary. I want this sanctuary to be so large, we'll never have a need for <laughs> two services. Just 10,000 people in one WAP. One service, one kill, go home. Afterwards, we can play basketball on our basketball court. We can eat in our, our little area to eat. Our fellowship hall that's gonna look so nice that people in the community are gonna wanna rent it from us to add more resources. It'll have its own little outside entrance. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Kids can come in on a Saturday morning between 8 and 11, me and Greg and, and John and Big V. We're going to cut their hair for free so that they'll be all right. John had visions about the warehouse that we're going to have in the back so we can have intake like the Salvation Army. We don't have to turn people back on their donations and then set up shops so nice where people can come in and get the things that they need for free. I need a couch, we got it. I need a dresser, we got it. I need a couple TVs, we got it. I need a phone, we got it. Whatever you need, as long as God's got it, we got it, and we're gonna freely give it to you. I'm talking about your church. Your church. Unlimited clothes. We won't have a coat drive in October. We are gonna be collecting coats every day. We'll never run out of coats. I'm talking about the vision of this house. We don't want to just have church services, but we want to be a church that serves. Ooh, that's good. That's, mm, I'm going to buy the CD just for that point. Every church that has a lot of services isn't always too great in their serving. And that's the problem that the community has with us as a church. You're going to put your big old building up in our community, walking in with your nice clothes, and we out here looking in your building, you looking out at us, and you have failed to make a connection with us. Your church services seem to be jumping, but when are you going to serve us? Because that's how you win the community. I'm just talking to you, though. That's your, that's your vision. I want Wistick to be a normal operations of seven days a week. Seven days a week with stuff going on with, with so many volunteers that we don't have to have church burnout. People are saying, I don't want to go there because I'm overused. Anybody know something about church burnout? So many volunteers of members and from the community, seven days a week, somebody can pray for you. We got somebody doing security. If you need something at the last minute, food, clothes, shelter, whatever it is, Wissick will be able to do it for you. I'm not just speaking out the side of my neck. I'm telling you what God wants this church to do. He wants us to do it. But he not only wants us to serve them, but we're going to teach them how to serve. So the same people that get blessed by us, they're going to help us bless other people. They're going to go into their communities and bless and go into the places we don't get to go and bless and bring more people. We're just going to recycle them over and over. We're going to have a whole city of blessers. We, we won't just have a city of takers, but we're going to teach them how they can bless other people. Community transformation at its best. Community transformation at its best. We're going to function as a resource center for local schools and families through partnerships with local government and business entities. You know, I want to be an extension of the local school system where youth have a safe and godly environment to get tutoring, to work on their GEDs, to receive mentorship and have a robust library and computer technology. I want to be able to do that. But you know what? I just had an idea the other day. I want to be able to do something for the teachers and the administrators and the principals. Maybe I can go to their school and say, hey, do you want to meet me on Tuesday and Thursday at the church at 12 just for some spiritual enlightenment, just to talk, just to get you encouraged for the students and for the challenges you have to meet. Whatever we have to do, we need to be that for the community. We've got to be that. I want us to be able to get grants where we can assist schools so that when the schools call us, because they will call us and say, 
Kids still need uniforms. We got the computer cable hookups, but no computers. We don't have all the books, and our budget has run out. I want God to give us favor with grant writers so that the mayor or the people of the town call us, and we say, we got enough to do that. Tell us what computers we want. How many kids need uniforms? What are their sizes? I want us to have that type of partnership. I'm talking about your church and your vision. We're going to provide ongoing programs, training, and classes to help facilitate the various needs within the community. God's going to give us the ability to give. But we're going to teach people how to empower themselves through these various seminars. And I pray that God will send us skilled practitioners that will be willing to volunteer their time and experience to facilitate training programs programs and classes to promote community health and transformation. God, send us everybody we need, electricians, plumbers, mechanics, doctors, nurses, whatever we need to train this community. It's going to be so awesome because places on the outside and agencies on the outside where they couldn't get in, maybe the line was too long and they didn't have access, they'll find access at WISIC. And not only will they get the training, but they'll get God at the same time. That's what makes it better. So we'll put the training in perspective, talking about your church and your vision. We're going to acquire and increase utilization of various media advances in communication to further promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our kingdom investment will allow us to get the best video cameras. We praise God for what we have, but I just saw, I showed my wife, I saw some stuff on TV the other day. It was T.D. Jakes, and I know we say it's T.D. Jakes and it's the Potter's house. That picture, that picture looked clearer than me looking at you right now. I don't know what type of camera that is, but in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now that God, you send us about five, six, seven, and eight of those because we're good stewards over what you've given us, God. We don't want people to just hear the gospel, but we want them to see it in a clear way. So we receive it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us a T.D. Jakes camera anointing. I want that camera. It was the craziest picture I've ever seen. I have never seen something so clear. Me the ministry get ready to replace them. I feel it coming. Just get, just get, as, as they start coming in, thank you, thank you. You don't even know who you're thinking. They just gonna come to the door and be like, oh, somebody told me to get these to y'all. And they just gonna, just, the person ain't even gonna know why they're being used. <laughs> but the prayers of the righteous of fairly much. <laughs> Your investment will allow us to get even the best microphones. That's why I can't preach with that lapel mic anymore. <laughs> it was good for a starter church, but it ain't good for where we're going. So we got to be able to have the best microphones, the best computers, and we're going there. And afford the media packages that will allow us to stream all over the world. Those cost money. You can get a small media package for free with a whole bunch of pop-ups. But if we want to stream all over the world and do it right, the packages are going to cost us something. And to be able to get on as many local and national television networks and internet radio stations to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got a good friend, uh, he said to me one day, he said, I'm listening to all these people and I'm watching your stuff and I'm watching the Word Network and I'm watching you all stuff and I'm wondering how come you all aren't up here because some of the stuff that I'm watching is garbage. Just wait, brother, just a matter of time. We'll be there. You know why? Because the people of God in this church who are here with a plan and a purpose by God for the will of this church are going to invest to make sure that we have it. If you're part of this, you're going to invest and make sure that we have it. And lastly, we're going to be a visible manifestation of God's presence, power, and love within the community. That's nice having all of that stuff, but we have to be a presence in the community. We're never going to be that church that hides behind our media, hides in our church service, but we're always going to be present in the community because that's what lets them know that we're about them but more importantly, that God is about them. That's what people want to know. Is God for me? Is God against me? We need to show them that even in their sin, 
even in their bad lifestyles, which some of us still have. Can I get a witness in the building? Okay, just yeah, don't play. I got some mail up here I read. Even in the midst of that, they need to know that God still wants to touch them. God still favors them and that God still wants to bless them. We want the community to be in on it with us and experiencing the favor of God. If we can dance around the church, God favors us, we have the favor, they can feel the same favor because he shines on the just as well as the unjust. And part of his way of shining on the unjust is through us. You know how I know this? Because you are the light of the world. I'm preaching. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. They can't see him in here, out there, and glorify our Father in heaven. Oh, yeah. You're how he shines on the unjust, being a light, letting them see, letting them see your good deeds so they can glorify the same God that we glorify. And guess what? If they never make it in here for a service, does it really matter? As long as they experience the favor, as long as we can give them Jesus, that's the only thing that matters. Will any church ever get the whole community to come up in there? You can't even get every member of Wissick to come every, every week. We don't, God controls that. God controls that. But that's the vision of this church. Pick up a stewardship today, brochure, they're around, one per household if you can. But you're going to see this every week in a bulletin to remind you. And I pray that if you're sitting still on whatever God's given you, that it convicts you to say, Ooh, praise, ooh, I got to move and do something. Every time you look at your bulletin, ooh, I got to do something. Just get an unction. Go see somebody. We're going to put some leadership pictures on the back. Just go be like, I need to see that person, that person, and that person. Because I'm about the vision of this house. But the next thing here is anything that you're doing has to have value to it. Anything that a company does, they do it for value's sake. It can't just be about the customers, but if it has no value for the, cust for the company, there's no use doing it. That's just good business practice. I say we're going to talk about the vision, the value, and the victory. These are a little quicker. This is how I see our church. Acts 2, 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles. This is after Peter preached his message and those 3,000 souls got saved. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. This community is awesome, by the way. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. That's bad right there. You got to be in tune with God to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to sell my BMW, make sure you have something you need. Only God could impress somebody to do that. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. They were spreading around so everybody felt the favor of God. You know, the people of God can be funny. They'll talk about my favor and my favor and don't mind if you don't have any favor. That's just the way we are. God's favoring me. He's doing it for me. And we don't mind doing that and, and seeing somebody else doesn't have the same testimony as you. But these people in the text were like, we all going to share in the same thing. If I, I'm not going to shout unless I can help you shout at the same time. I'm not going to have if you can't have at the same time. But notice what God did. It says, and the Lord added to their number daily those that were being saved. Because they shared. Because they gave. Because the favor of God was on everyone in the church, outside of the church. They didn't have to worry about members because God ensured that the people came into the church. Acts 4, 32 to 35. All the believers were, were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. That sounds like some value. That's great for them, but watch this. 
In our four years as a church, WISIC has exemplified the principles of stewardship and has given over 60,000, maybe right now closer to 70,000, for things such as feeding the community breakfast, purchasing turkeys and sides for Thanksgiving, providing groceries to families, helping people with their rent and utilities, blessing financially a local homeless shelter, a recovery home for addicts, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Feed the Children, Nursing Home Outreach, over 750 children with backpacks full of school supplies and multiple other services and activities. I'm talking about the value in what we do. You may not want to shout about that, but that's good to me. Because as your leader, I'm setting us up for God to release into us. The, the, the valve of Wissick stays on. The valve stays on because I need God to pour in and through this ministry. But that helped a lot of people in the community. That's great. But additionally, we have benefited from having a fully furnished facility. Look around, you don't see mixed mac chairs and all of that. When I'm preaching in the mic, it's not like, hey, did y'all walk out the door right now? <laughs> Anybody here ever been to a storefront church outside of this one? You just be like, Lord, help them get it together at some point. I mean, the preacher is doing his best, and he's probably very clear in his presentation, but that mic won't allow him to be clear. Should I come? Should I stay? I don't know what to do. I just, I just, you don't know what to do. The value in what we do, it hasn't just blessed the community, but we have benefited from this. We have one of the best sound systems out in the back. Your investment has done it. That's no Rudy Poot sound system. Go look at it. That is one of the best. Go look it up online, and it's connected to one of the best computers out. There's value in what we do. We can't give y'all no crazy CDs, uploading some crazy sounding sermons. Look at this Hammond B2. Let me tell you how great, <laughs> let me tell you how great God is so I can move. The God that services this organ, Stuart Organ, he services most of the major mega churches around here. He said in a good economy for this set that we got here should have cost about $15,000. Let me tell you how good God is to us. This beautiful B2 costs $900, and that speaker costs $1,200. Many churches still looking to get one of those, but we got, Greg, can you show them how it works real quick? Just play one chord. Just something real funky right quick, Greg, just for the message. Can you do it? Oh, I'll put you in. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> that thing sounds great. But God did that. That's the value in what we do. It's allowed us to be able to conduct ministry with excellence. And I'm not talking about churches that don't have what we have, but I like an excellent ministry. And if you look around, everything in here is excellent. It's the value in what we have. There's value in what we do, and people are being blessed by this ministry, both the members and the community. And because of it, watch this, God is turning the community into our congregation. Yeah, he's turning the community into our congregation. So we must keep working because the community keeps watching. Because whether we always see the fruit of our faithfulness or not, God sees what we are doing and has a harvest in place ready to flood our ministry in numerical growth, spiritual growth, and financial growth. Last one, though, the victory. The victory. Now, what has God given us? Why do we have a vision? We have a vision because there's something that God has shown us. There's something we have. And our key scripture here is written on our T-shirts. If you want a Wissick T-shirt member or not, see Greg or Minister Hollis. We got plenty in the back, $5. And if you really want one and don't have it, I'll buy you one just so you can pump it in the community. I'm serious about that. Just see me say, Pastor, I want a shirt. I'll buy you one just so you can use that to evangelize in the community. Joshua 1, 3 through 5. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites into the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. 
No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. That, that's our takeover scripture right there. That's our takeover scripture. Everything that we have is proof of something greater that God wants to do for and through this ministry. But in order to see the abundance of what God wants to do, we have to invest what we have. We must invest our time. We must invest our gifts and our financial resources into every area that we want to see God increase us in. Every area. We can't be reserved. We can't hold back. We must have a touch point. We must have a connection with, or as the text says, we must make a footprint in every area that we want to take over, believing that God has already given it to us. Got to make a footprint in every area. I want you to start thinking about, and I want us to think outside the box. I like the message you left on my phone, uh, Mitch. Think outside the box. Wherever we need to make a footprint in, I believe that God has already given it to us. In order to take over, wherever we step, wherever we invest and serve, it will be given to us. So we need to step into the prison and the detention centers. We need to step into the nursing homes and the adult daycare facilities. We need to step into the school system. We need to step into the local government. We need to step into local community centers and boys and girls clubs, local businesses and establishments, even law enforcement, fire rescue and healthcare facilities. These are all the areas that we need to step in. We need to step in residential districts. And how do we do it? Street walkers, television, radio, flyers, brochures, postcards, letters, meetings, gatherings, outreach endeavors, any method that gives us a footprint. And guess what? It takes resources to do them all. If God has given it to us, let's step there. If we believe he wants us to have it, let's step there. Because I believe in my heart that God is just waiting for us to step into these places so that he can prove to us that it's already ours. God has given us the victory in our mission as a church because he gave the mission and the vision. He has already given us our territory, but we have to step in and receive it. I not only receive Pasadena, but I receive any city, any county, any state, and any country that God reveals to us that he wants us to invest in. This is just our Jerusalem. Once we're done here, we're going to go to Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. But right now, we've got to take care of Jerusalem, a.k.a. Pasadena. God has given us a vision, and God has given us provision. And as a church, as those of us that are servants and stewards, it is required that we be found faithful and investing the provision that God has given each of us to fulfill the vision. The vision is written, it's been explained, and it's been made plain to the people of God. And now we've got to run with it. It's plain, but now we have to run with it. I believe that what many of us will do at Wissett will probably be one of the most impactful things that you will ever do in your life. I know it is for me, and I don't know if you're happy to be a part of it, but I'm happy. I'm like that hair care commercial. I'm not only a president, I'm also a client. I'm not only a pastor, I'm also a member. So I'm part, I'm part of, and I'm happy about this beautiful thing that God has allowed us to do. And it's so big, and God has allowed you and I to be a part of it. God has not only showed us and told us what he wants to do, but he has given to us what we need to do it. Faithfulness is what God is looking for. So guess what? Let's take over together. Stewardship with a purpose. God bless you. Right now the altar is open for prayer won't belabor the time. If you're here and you need prayer for anything, first of all, maybe you're here and you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're saying, I need to receive Jesus Christ. I know something about him. I've read about him. I know how to spell his name. My mom has a great relationship with him, and so does my dad, grandparents, but I don't. 
Or maybe you want to come up because you're saying, nobody in my lineage does. But I've been feeling God prompting me. I've been feeling God speaking to me. And today I want to have a relationship with Jesus. I want him to be my Lord and Savior. And I want him to use me to help save, to help bring other souls into the fold. I want to be a participant in what God is doing. If you need prayer for anything, the altar's open for you. We won't belabor the time. Anything. Maybe here today and you're saying, I need a church home. I want to be a part of this vision. This vision is crazy. I want to help. I want to do something. I got some time, some talents, and some treasure. We'll take all three. And if you give us one, we'll pray the other two out. Amen. If you're here today and you're saying, I want to be a part of winning souls, we ask you to come forward. Amen. Anybody else, just walk down with your bad self. Amen. 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 You want to be a part of this church and what God is doing? You want to help fulfill this vision?